it's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and this week we're going to talk about authorization and authentication for your sites and of course when we're talking about authorization and open source one of the first things that's going to come to mind is Authelia. Now Authelia gives you a web-based interface to do single factor and multi-factor authentication on the front of any of your web applications. So it's really a very cool application when you think about it. Now, a lot of applications have authentication already baked in, but let's say you want to have a single sign-on or a single point of entry for any of your applications, and you want to make that really easy. So instead of having to go and combine Authelia into a whole bunch of other applications, maybe those applications have an option to turn off authentication within their app, and in that case, you could do that and then turn on Authelia. Maybe you want to have Authelia in front of your web app, and then once you get to that point, you want to have to log in a second time. So instead of two-factor authentication, that would be more like single-factor authentication twice, which is not the same. But you could also turn on two-factor authentication for Authelia and then have single-factor authentication on the web app. Again, just making it more complex and more complicated for any kind of nefarious person to get in and do something nasty with your self-hosted applications. The other great thing about something like Authelia is for applications where you don't have an authenticated front end. So something like Homer, my Homer dashboard. I, I access my Homer dashboard through dash.routemehome.org. This is technically open for anybody to go and try to use. Now, all you're going to get is a bunch of links to sites, and a lot of these are just sites that are internal to my network. So it's not going to pass you through to my internal network sites, but I could be worried about you getting to my Google search and trying to use Google search for something else. I could be worried about you trying to get to some of these other apps, right? But what I can do, is I and I have done, is I can put Othelia in front of my dash.routemehome.org site. And now whenever somebody tries to go here, the first thing they're going to get is an Othelia authentication prompt. They're going to have to authenticate before they'll be forwarded on to the Homer web page. So I've protected my Homer dashboard site using Authelia. And it's kind of the same way, actually, with something like Google Search. So here I've got Google Search, but I've authenticated through Authelia. Now, if I authenticate through Authelia for each application, I can tell it to remember me so that for me, you see that it's not popping up the authentication prompt every time I go open up these shortcuts. Instead, it knows who I am and it has a session length and then I, the session length will expire at a time that I've set up in my configuration file. So you can kind of see what happens here with Authelia and the things that we're trying to set up and make it do. So what I'll do is I'm going to open up a private window here dash.routemehome.org and now you see that I get the Authelia prompt. It does not go straight to my dashboard. First it redirects me to Authelia which I now have to authenticate with and once I do that it will take me to my dashboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and authenticate here. Yeah so this was just username password but there is the option for two-factor authentication as well. But now you can see in this private window I've got my application up and running and I can get to my dashboard. So now let's say somebody got to here and they said I'm gonna go do searches. I'm already authenticated but I could change this to be two-factor authentication for Google search and then they would have a hard time getting to that search screen. All right, I've opened up a new window and I'm going to go to intop.routemehome.org. So in this case, you see I get the Authelia prompt. I'll start to log in here. And you'll see that I now get a two-factor authentication request. So for intop, I've set up two-factor authentication. So when you do this, you get set up for the one-time password, and I'm showing you all of the upfront so you can see what Authelia is about and determine if you want to install it. I don't always do this on most of my videos, but today I thought, you know what, let me show you what's going on because there is some setup and configuration required, but it's totally worth it, and it's really, really not that bad once you get used to the idea of what you need to do for Authelia. So I'm going to open up my authentication application here. I'm doing that on my phone. And I'm going to go in and tell it I need my Authelia stuff here. So once I type in the correct password, I don't even have to hit enter. It just shows up and says, hey, you did it. Good job. Now, you can see that NTOPNG also has authentication set up for it. So I would also have to you know, log in through NTOPNG. Um, I don't honestly remember if it's the right password or not. 
There we go. So I've got basically single factor authentication two times, but really it's two factor authentication with Authelia and then single factor authentication for NTOPNG itself, which made it even hard for me to get logged in, much less anyone else if they just really want to see what my network traffic looks like. But this is kind of a good example of what you can do with Authelia. So again, you can put Authelia in front of your different applications that you're trying to run. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use Authelia to get set up on our websites and we're going to set it up. We're going to configure it. I'm going to show you all of the things that you're going to need in order to do that. And I've got some really great scripts kind of set up to help you make things easier if you're not already set up with some of the basics. So we'll go through that in just a minute. Just want to say thank you to all of my patrons over at Patreon. I truly, truly appreciate all of your support. I cannot express to you how much it means to me. I also want to say thank you so much to my subscribers over on YouTube. If you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up. Give it that like. Go ahead and subscribe and then hit the notification bell so you'll know when I put out new videos. So really to run Othelia, you need a few things. Now we're going to run Othelia today with basically kind of a local user database that runs in SQLite. You do have the option to run the MariaDB or the MySQL database or Postgres SQL database. They have a few different database backends. If you're going to have lots and lots and lots of users with Othelia, you'll have to go do a little bit of self-study on that to get all that stuff set up though. Today I'm really talking about a home user setup where you might have 10 users, maybe 12 if it's, if it's just a really big home for some reason. But you get much beyond that, you probably want to look into the uh, other database backend options. But today we're going to do the, the kind of home user setup. So there's a few things you need. One, you'll need a Docker Compose file with the appropriate things set up in it, which we'll go through. It's really a, a very simple Docker Compose file, which is great. You're going to need a configuration file for Othelia itself. In my show notes, I will have a copy of the configuration file that we're using for Othelia. Uh, I will have it, of course, blanked out with information for you guys to use for whatever you're needing, and you can just change out the little bits that you need here and there. And then finally, you'll need Nginx Proxy Manager, because we're going to do this with Nginx Proxy Manager today. Now, Athelia out of the gate uses traffic, T-R-A-E-F-I-K, the, the reverse proxy called traffic. Again, I'm not a traffic expert. I'm not somebody who really knows that much about it. So I figured, okay, let me go out and see how to do this with Nginx Proxy Manager. And after some digging around on Reddit and some digging around on the internet and some other places, I really did find some good information. The other place I want to point you is over to the Ebracorp channel because he has covered how to do this with Unraid and even gone a little bit further and, and set it up with some LDAP using free IPA. So if you're interested in that, go check out his video. It's really, really tremendous. I will link it in the description as well so that you can get to that. Uh, but we're going to do this right now with just Docker, uh, Docker Compose, Nginx Proxy Manager, the configuration file. You're going to need a user database file and then the Docker Compose file. So we're going to kind of go through this in order. Just be patient and we'll get there. So really the first thing you want to do is set up Docker Compose, uh, Docker, and Nginx Proxy Manager. If you don't already have those set up on your machine that you're going to use for your Authelia server, then you need to get that set up. And the good news is I've got a script out here. So I've had these scripts out here for a while, and you've seen them if you've seen some other videos where it installs Docker and Docker Compose for you. But I went ahead and modified one of them, and I'll modify these others soon so that we actually install Nginx Proxy Manager and get it up and running for you as well. So you can go out here and click on this uh, file. You can highlight everything in here. Just, just click on it, and I'll have a link in the description in the show notes. Highlight everything. Copy that, and you're going to paste that into a simple uh, document here. So I'll show you how to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm on this local machine here, so I'm just going to say, you know what, let's just go ahead and try to make sure everything's set up. If it's not, it'll install it for us, which is great. So I'm going to create a folder, Authelia. Okay, very simple, very straightforward. Now I'm going to create a file called docker install.sh. You can see that there's nothing in here. So I'm going to go back to my repository here. I'm just going to go up here. I'm going to start at the very top. I'm going to highlight all the way to the bottom of this file. It's a little bit long, but that's okay. I put a lot of comments in. I'm going to hit control C to copy. I'm going to go back to my terminal. I'm going to do control shift V to paste all of that in. I want to make sure there's one line here at the end. There we go. I'm going to go all the way to the very top of the program here just to make sure I got all of the characters. We want to make sure we have a, sh a shebang, which is the hashtag and the exclamation point. And we're set. So I'm going to hit control O to save that file. I'm going to do control X 
And now I'm going to change the permission on the file with chmod space plus x space docker install.sh. Now we can run this file docker hyphen install.sh and this is going to install docker ce which is a community edition docker compose and nginx proxy manager and it's going to start up nginx proxy manager for us once it's installed now i think i already have docker and everything installed on here but it'll try to go through the process anyway so we're just going to hit enter and it's going to ask for your sudo user password if you're not logged in as sudo so make sure you type that in it's going to go out and update all of your repositories to make sure it's getting the latest information So once you get to this prompt, just hit enter to continue. All right, so if you're logged in as a regular user, you may come across this prompt right here. And the thing is that it installed Docker and Docker Compose here on my machine, but I'm logged in as a normal user. I do have a command in there to set up the normal user in the Docker group, but until you've logged out and back in, sometimes it won't actually take that command. So you actually have to run sudo uh, Docker Compose up. So in order to fix this problem, it's no big deal. You just go CD Nginx Proxy Manager, and then we're going to just do an ls, and we should have a Docker Compose.yaml file there. We do. Now, this has got all defaults set up in it for your docker compose.yaml file. You need to understand that you should go into this file and change those defaults so that they're not username pass, uh, npm, password npm, and, and change them in both sections and things like that. So if you do nano docker compose.yaml, you'll see here these are just set up as npm and npm. So you need to change them here and then down in the next section. You need to change the same things. Change the user and the password here to match what you put up at the top. You should use whatever user you want and then a strong password. Just make sure to do that. Save your changes with Control O and Enter and then exit nano with that. And then you can do sudo if you don't want to log out and back in to get this started. Docker compose up dash D. So this will go out and get Nginx proxy manager and pull it down and get everything started for us. And here we can see that we've got Nginx Proxy Manager App 1 and Nginx Proxy Manager DB1 both running, and they've been running for about five minutes, so they should be up. Now, if we want to check that with our web page, we can go to localhost colon 81, and you'll see here that you get Nginx Proxy Manager that comes up, and we're going to go in, and you use admin at example.com. And the password is C-H-A-N-G-E-M-E. -E. That's the default login. When you log in the first time, it's going to ask you to change those things. So change this email address here to something else. When you hit save, it's going to ask you about the password. So here, make sure you type in the old password. And then type in a new password. And save. And after I do that, I like to go over here and log out and then log back in with my new credentials just to make sure everything was working as I expect. Maybe I typed something wrong here. There we go. Once we're logged in, we're pretty much set for what we need for Nginx Proxy Manager for right now. So we're just going to leave this alone and we'll come back to it after, after a little bit of time. So we've done our docker compose.yaml file. Step one is done. We're going to go to step two, which means we need a database.yaml file. Uh, and we're going to call that usersdatabase.yml. So we're going to go back into our terminal. And we're going to go in. Uh, we're going to backspace out of this. We're just going to back out. And we're going to do Othelia. And we're going to say ls. And there's going to be a configuration folder as well as some other things. So inside of Othelia, we're going to create a file called config. You can see that it's there now. We're going, to, we're going to create a second file called Redis. This is all going to be part of the Docker Compose file that we need. So we created a folder called config and a folder called Redis. If we do an ls, we can see those. Now we're going to make a file called docker-compose.yaml again. So we're going to do nano space docker-compose.yml. It's going to be blank, 
So we're going to paste in this information right here and you can see that we're going to have a Docker Compose file that's version 3.3. The services are going to be Othelia. The image is going to be Othelia slash Othelia. And then for volumes, we're going to map dot slash config, which is in this folder that we just created. And it's going to be mapped to slash config on the container side. For the ports, we're going to map 9091 to 9091. If for some reason on your host 9091 is already taken, you can change the left side port to a port that's open. Do not change the right side. This is the container port and this is where it expects the app to be running. Restart unless stopped, health check, and we're going to put here disable true so it doesn't do any kind of health check. And then for the time zone, you're going to put whatever your time zone is. Mine is America slash Chicago. You should put in whatever yours is. It might be Europe slash London or who knows, okay? Europe slash Paris or Africa slash wherever. Just make sure to put in the correct time zone for your area because when you do two-factor authentication, time zone will matter if you're getting a time-based uh, one-time pin. Finally, we're going to have a dependency on Redis, and then below that we'll see the Redis section. So here the image is going to be Redis Alpine. The volumes are going to be dot slash Redis, which is the, another folder we just created, and it's mapped to slash data on the uh, actual container side. And we're just going to expose the Redis port 6379 so that we can connect to it from our Othelia side. There's nothing for us to get to on the Redis part from the web. Again, we're going to restart unless stopped. And again, we're going to set our time zone to America slash Chicago for me, and you will set your time zone accordingly. That's really everything that you need inside of the Docker Compose file. So we're going to do Control O and save it with Enter and then Control X. And now if we do LS, we can see we have our Docker Compose, we have our Config, and we have our Redis. This is number one of three. We've created number one file of three. So now we're going to create the next one. We're going to do CD config. And inside of config, we're going to do nano users underscore database dot YML. Just like this. And we're going to hit enter. It's going to be empty. All right, we're going to paste in this text. And again, I'll have this in my show notes so that you can grab it easily and put it in here. You can see right out of the gate, they have some default users. John Doe, this is the hashed password. So there is a command that will run so that you can hash your password when it's time to put it in. And then you have their email address, the groups that they belong to. So you can just name whatever groups you want. This comes into play later. If you want to allow certain groups access to certain applications and other groups not to have access to those applications. Again, you see here that we've got Harry Potter. In this case, he has no groups that he's assigned to. He's got an empty set here. You've got Bob Dylan. And again, he's got one group. And then down here, we've got James Dean. And he has no groups at all because he didn't have that section. So they've given you a really simple way to kind of see what's going on here. But this is your user's database, your username. So inside of the user's database file, we have the username right here. That's the header of this section. Next is the display name for who this belongs to the hashed password and again we'll have a command that will run to hash the passwords the email address of the user and the groups they belong to and then you just repeat that all the way down for any users you want again if you get above 10 or 12 users you probably want to start thinking about getting the database stuff set up and not using SQLite but we'll do that so here I'm gonna delete a bunch of this stuff and in nano you can delete line by line just by using control K so we can get rid of all the stuff here at the bottom I can change this to be Brian and then I can go over here and change this to be my name and then we'll change the password here in just a minute when we run that command and here you can change this to be your email address of course and then of course any groups that you want to have admins dev whatever you want to call it I don't need to be a dev but I can be an admin and then make sure you have a line there at the bottom. We're going to save this real quick. So that's not my password. We're just going to save this real quick. And then we're going to exit. And we're going to go run that command so that we can actually get our password that we need. All right. Right here at the very end, you're just going to replace the password with your password. So we're just going to say our password is a really terrible password. So don't use this password. But once we run this, it's going to pull down Othelia. Uh, I'm still not logged out and back in, so we're going to do sudo. So if you have that issue, just hit sudo. 
It's going to go pull down Othelia. It's very quick. It's not a very large file. It's going to hash your password. And then it's going to give you the password hash right here. So you're going to just grab all of this. You're going to copy it with either Control shift c or you can right-click and select Copy from the menu, either way. We're going to go back into our users database.yaml and we're going to go back here. We're going to get inside the quotes. We're just going to erase everything that's on this line. We're going to leave the two quotes and we're just going to do Control shift v or you can right-click and hit Paste. Now we've got our hashed password in there. Control o for save and then control X for exit. So now we've got our users database.yaml set up. We now have two out of three configuration files set. I know with me talking through it, it takes a long time, but if you go do this and you're copying it, once you've done it once, it's gonna go very quickly. This will only take you a few minutes to get everything set up for Authelia. Finally, we need our configuration.yaml file. So we're gonna do nano configuration.yml. Make sure you spell everything correctly. Once you have that set, hit enter. And again, we're going to go in and we're just going to copy and paste our configuration.yaml file here. Now this is kind of a long file, but that's okay. So we're going to go back up. It's a long file, but it makes sense and there's not a lot for you to change, honestly. So first we're going to say host is 0000. We don't really have to have anything specific here, but you can put a specific IP address if you know what that's going to be. Port is 9091. Unless you change that port, just leave it as 9091. So here you're just going to create a long string of letters and numbers, okay? Mix case, everything like that. This is just a key. It needs to be a key that you set up that's private. It's a key that you keep that you never tell anybody. You're going to have a redirection URL. Now this is going to come into play a little bit early. So here we don't want it to be example.com. We want it to be what we have set up. So we're going to say OSIA, and in my case, it's dot me, okay? And I'll show you how all of this works together in just a little bit, but you want to set up whatever your domain is going to be here, and you want to have something like auth dot whatever your domain is after that, okay? So this is going to be basically the outside address that you're going to get to Othelia from, that's running on your machine. Now, if you're running this on like a DigitalOcean server, you're not going to have to do any kind of special port forwarding. But if you're running Nginx Proxy Manager for the first time, you need to make sure that you forward ports 80 and 443 from outside your homeland to inside your homeland to the machine that's running Nginx Proxy Manager. So if you don't know how to do that, let me know and I'll do a video on how to do it. But there's lots of videos out there on port forwarding and it just depends on what your router is set up as. So we're going to come on down and right here on issuer, again, we're going to change this to be our domain, osia.me in this case. Okay. Open source is awesome.me. I'm going to leave this at 30 and I'm going to leave this as uh, SKU is one. This is our TOTP information. So this is how we're going to get our two factor authentication if we want to have that. Now below that, you're going to see a section that's all commented out. Um, if you want to use the Duo API, you can buy credits for that and it uses push notifications to basically send you a notification like, hey, you tried to log in and then there's probably like a little button you push to say, yeah, it was me, that kind of thing, instead of using like a TOTP app. But I prefer this. I don't want to use an API. But if you want to, you can uncomment this, go set everything up and you need to fill in all of these uh, different information pieces here. I have not done it, so I can't really walk you through it. The authentication backend information here. So disable reset password, which means the user can't reset their password on their own. You could set this to true if you want to. I left it false because I want to be able to reset my password if I ever forget it. File. So right here, we're going to say config. And this is exactly where we put it. It's going to be a slash config slash users underscore database dot yml now if you named your file something different than users underscore database dot yml make sure to put that name right here you have to change it here as well and i have a little comment out here that says make sure to create this file it's very important if you don't create it it's not going to work password information so how's the password going to be encrypted so the algorithm is here all the information is here i didn't change any of this if i were you i wouldn't change any of this stuff unless you really know what you're doing 
Finally, default policy is to deny. This is very important. This means that all domains added in Nginx Proxy Manager rules will be denied unless you set them up here. So the default rule says that if, if you have Authelia in front of this, of this website and you haven't set that website up in here yet, even if you authenticate with Authelia, it's not going to redirect you to that site. It's going to give you an error page instead. So basically, it's kind of like acting like a firewall. It's kind of like, well, I mean, I see that you authenticated, but you're trying to get to a site that's not in my list of sites right here. So I'm not going to help you out by forwarding you on. You know, you're out of luck. So make sure that if you set up a site that you want to be able to go, that you set it up here. So let's just pretend that we have a site called movies.osia.me. Um, it doesn't exist, but we'll just create one, osia.me. And that's my Jellyfin server. And then here we have our authentication server that we also want to make sure is not protected by, by Authelia, osia.me. So this one you want to make sure that you have it as you set up the domains, and then you're going to set the rule as bypass. So this, this one right here, I won't have to authenticate to get to it. And this one right here, I won't have to authenticate to get to it. So this one totally makes sense. Like, I don't want to have to authenticate to get to my authentication. Instead, I need to go to my authentication page and let me authenticate and then take me to the other pages that are down here behind it. If you have other sites that you're like, I don't want this to be protected, I want to bypass it, then set it here and then you can still set up the rules and at some point you want to change that. All you got to do is move this entry down to wherever you want it. So it makes it pretty easy to do that. If you don't want it, to be protected by Othelia, don't put the rules in Nginx Proxy Manager and don't list it here, and that's the other route you can go, just to be clear. All right, so down here, so I have dashboard.example.com, search.example.com, and then example.com. So if you want to just protect everything that you can here, this is going to be uh, osia.me. Don't forget to go through and change these to your domain. And then right here. So we're just going to change this as we go down. And here you can see the policy is one factor. So just like I had on dash, on my dash.routemehome.org, it's one factor. That means username and password. So we're going to keep going down. Now here you can also set like, hey, only allow it if it's coming from a certain IP range. Don't, don't let me do things if it's not coming from a certain IP range. Uh, that'll also kind of protect you. So like local network access only kind of things. You can set that here with the network stuff. I'll let you guys dig into that a little bit if you want it. So now if we want two factor, all we do is go to the end here. We're going to hit enter. We're going to space out because this is YAML. Um, we're going to say, let's see, let's get into the right spot, dash domain, colon. And then we're going to space out out here to dash. And we're going to give it some other thing. So let's just call this intop.osia.me. And you can add more things under that list if you want to. But here we're going to go out. We're going to do policy. And we're going to say two factor. So now we've got it set up for two factor. You can add this networks piece if you want to. You don't have to. But now we've got two factor set up for this same exact thing. So I'm going to say save this real quick while we're going. Just control O and enter to save. Just don't exit. So we're going to keep moving down. So right here, we've got Othelia session. By default, this was set to 300, which is like five minutes, I think. Um, no, five minutes of inactivity, and I think it was, I don't remember how short it was here, but I changed them to be 3,600 seconds, which is an hour, and 7,200 seconds, which is two hours. So if I'm inactive for two hours and I come back to the page and try to do something, it's going to reprompt me to log back in. Um, if, I, if I go here and uh, it's expired after an hour, if I reopen the browser, it's going to prompt me to log back in. So domain, right here, you need to put in what your domain is. This needs to match whatever you've set up for your protected domains. So this is going to be osia.me in my case. This will be whatever your domain is. Make sure you put it in correctly. See, I made a little spelling error there. Uh, Redis, so this is going to be important. You need to set this to be whatever it's going to be whenever you run Docker Compose. If you use my Docker Compose file, it should come up as this right here. You shouldn't have any problems. But just in case, if the name changes, this is this is where you're going to go change that name from Docker. So if your Docker name for your Redis uh, database is not this, then you'll just come here to change it to whatever it is in Docker. Port, if you didn't change it, leave it alone, and you shouldn't have changed it in this case. Um, so regulations. So the max retries to guess my password is 5. If I don't do that, it's going to lock me out. 
It's going to lock me out for 10 minutes, okay? And then I can try again, but until then I'm locked. I can't try that site again. Uh, the, the find size, the find time is two minutes. I can't remember what this is for. Um, oh, if I try five times within two minutes and fail, then I get locked out for 10 minutes. That's how it works. So if you want this to be longer or shorter, you can change those. Feel free to change them to whatever you want. Most places do like three tries, I think three tries in two minutes, and then it's 10 or 15 minutes locked out, but it's up to you. The theme. So you can do dark or you can do light. If you don't like the dark theme, do the light theme. Uh, I like dark, so I'm going to leave it that way. As we go down the storage, so here this is what we want to make sure is set. This is already going to be set. You don't need to change it. It's going to do this and then it'll create this file whenever you run the Docker Compose stuff. But it's going to be db.sqlite3. Again, if you're doing a whole lot of users, you probably don't want to use SQLite. You probably want to use something more like MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres. But for home usage, SQLite3 should be fine. So you do have two options for how to get a notifier if you forgot your password. So if you don't have an email server that you want to set up, you can uncomment these two lines and then go comment all of these lines out um, all the way down. So you'll comment out all of this stuff and then uncomment these two. And what happens is on the file system, it will basically create a file and it's going to be a file called notification.txt. So if you say, I forgot my password, I need to reset it this is where you would go find that reset password. It's going to put it in this folder. Instead of sending you an email, it's going to put it in a folder on the file system. In my case, I set up email. So up here, you put in your email username, your email password, your email host, which, you know, could be smtp.gmail.com. I don't suggest using Gmail. It's a pain. But, you know, if you want to, you can. Uh, port. Depending on what kind of uh, email server you have, you should know what these are, and your, your email provider should have SMTP ports for you, but generally it's 25 for non-SSL, 443 for SSL, and 587 for TLS. You'll need to figure out for sure what those are. So sender, this is your email sender, so whoever you want this to come from, and depending on your server, this name may not be allowed to be different from this name. So, so make sure you understand that if it doesn't work for some reason and you tried to make those different, Go back and set this to an actual email address and make it sure it's the same as the one at the top. Don't mess with this line right here. Athalia title is what we want. And then disable require TLS is false because I do need TLS. If you're not using TLS, make sure to disable this, set it to true. And then disable HTML emails. If you don't want to get HTML emails, then put true. If you just want plain text emails, put it as true. I don't mind HTML, it's fine. Finally, TLS, put in your server name. Uh, skip the verify, just leave it as false. And then TLS version 1.2 is what I have set. You can change this if you want to, but I don't recommend it. Anything less than this is not secure anymore. They found all kinds of security holes with it, so definitely 1.2 is better. That's it. That's the configuration file. I know it took a little while to go through that, but it's important for you to understand what's here and what you need to go through and fill in and change. But once you've got this set, other than this section right here, where you're putting in the domains that you want to protect, you never have to get into this file and mess with it anymore. You will add other domains here as you add new domains. You'll just go in, create a new line, space out here, put hyphen, and then put in whatever you want. So if you want this to be one factor, then you would put in something like, uh, you know, anything. Give me, give me something, right? Uh, nmap.osia.me. Maybe that's, maybe that's the new site. Once you do this, you save the file, you exit. You do the simple command of docker compose restart, and that's it. You don't have to do anything else. Now, we haven't started it yet, so it doesn't have docker compose running yet, but if you already have it running, you can go in and change that configuration file. You actually need to go back one directory first, but then docker compose restart. And when you hit enter, it's going to restart Docker Compose and it's going to reread that configuration file and add that new site to your index. So that's pretty awesome. Now, we've got our configuration file set up. We have to do some Nginx Proxy Manager stuff here in just a minute. And there's a little bit of stuff there, but it's really, really not that hard, I promise. And I'll kind of walk you through that. But first, we're going to do Docker Compose up. And I always like to do up first just to make sure that everything gets pulled down. That I don't have any uh, mess ups. Oh, connected Docker daemon at Docker localhost. Oh, yes. I have to keep doing sudo. I'm not used to this. Um, but if you'll log out and back in, you don't have to do sudo. I'm just, because I'm recording, I don't want to log out right now. Uh, sudo docker compose up. I 
I didn't set up all of the configuration. It has a whole bunch of placeholders in there. Um, so yeah, you should not see this. If you replace all of that data, you should just see that it comes up and runs. No problem. Uh, and you'll see that it works like mine. Because I have a bunch of placeholder stuff in there that's not valid, it's creating errors. I'm sorry about that. Um, but we'll go and we'll, we'll restart my other one and I'll let you see what it looks like. So, All right, so here I'm in my, in my production uh, Othelia server. So I'm going to do docker compose down just to bring it down for you guys. Now I'm going to do docker compose just up. So you can kind of see what the logs look like as it comes up to start running. So it tells you there's a few options that have been deprecated and they're going to be removed. So you may have to modify your configuration file as new versions of Authelia come out. Right here you can see log severity set to info. And it gets a little bit of information that says, here you go, 0000 colon 9091 path is slash. So we can go there and kind of check that out. So if we go and open up auth.routemehome.org in this case, we're going to see that we're set up. Now you can see I've told it to save my credentials. It just makes it faster for me on this machine as my own, but it may, it'll come up for you and just be blank. And if you set the light theme, it'll be on a light theme, but I can say sign in. It's not really going to go anywhere. It's just going to give me the two factor stuff here. Uh, so I'd have to get my phone out. And again, I'm going to identify myself. Yes. And it's going to come up and tell me what my key is right now, which is, And once I put that in, it tells me, hey, you've been set up, you're good, you've got one-time password, everything's checked, and I'm done. I don't really have to do anything else here because auth doesn't take me to anything else. It just takes me to the authorization screen. It's all of the other systems that we want to get set up. So we're going to go back and we're going to set up Nginx Proxy Manager, and we're going to kind of go through that, and I'll show you what you need to set up there for those sites that we set up in our configuration file. All right, we're so close to having everything set up, you wouldn't believe it. Now, like I said before, once you've got Nginx Proxy Manager set up and installed, you need to add a proxy host entry. So when you click on the Add Proxy Host button, there's several different places to get to it from. You'll see a form like this, and you want to put in that auth and then whatever your domain is. So in my case, it's routemehome.org. You want to put that in right here. You want to hit Tab or Enter so it makes it a little chip. Then down below that, you're going to see this HTTP already set. This is a little drop down. Just leave it on HTTP. Here, you're going to put in the server IP address where you're running Othelia. Now, if you're running it on the same server as Nginx Proxy Manager, and it's on the same server as all of the other apps that you're going to basically use Othelia in front of, you can use their Docker IPs. And if you set up a special network, then you could even use their Docker uh, names for those containers. But in this case, this is actually on a different server from where I run Nginx Proxy Manager. So I'm gonna put in the local IP address. And then here, I'm gonna put in that port that we set, which is 9091. Now remember, if you change that port when we were doing the setup on the Docker Compose file, you'll wanna set that port here, whatever you made it. I did tick block common exploits and WebSocket support. I don't know that this one is really necessary, but I, go, I went ahead and ticked it just in case. Uh, once you've done that, you can just hit save and the first thing you'll do is just click on the on the entry that you get over here and you'll see an entry like this that you may not have any other entries yet it may just be this one but you can click on this little link and it's going to bring you to the authorization page now i've already got ssl set up but you should see you'll probably see the login username and password and not the two-factor authentication page but that's okay as long as you see something that that says it's Authelia, then you know you've got some things set up correctly so you can close that tab you're going to go back to the row in Nginx Proxy Manager. You're just going to click on this three dots and then click on Edit. And then we're going to just jump over here to the SSL tab. And if you don't already have it set, you won't have this yet. You're going to say Request a new SSL certificate. So you're going to pick this option so it looks like that. You'll see all of these things down below it. We're going to tick the box for Force SSL. Make sure it's enabled. Then you're going to go down and make sure your email address is in here for Let's Encrypt. And then you'll say, I agree to the Let's Encrypt Terms of Service. If you want to see those, you can click right here. Once you've got that done, you're going to hit Save. It's going to spin for about 10, 15, 20 seconds. just depends on your internet connection. And then this box will just close and go away. And it'll look just like, it'll just go away like that with no errors. And you'll still see your entry there in Nginx Proxy Manager. And basically, you're just going to click on this again. 
and you should get the same window that comes up, but this time it should have the SSL lock there, which is good. So we're getting there. This is very, very good. Finally, we're going to close that tab, and one more time, we're going to go back and we're going to click on the three dots, and we're going to click on Edit, and we're going to go to the Advanced tab. Now, I don't usually use the Advanced tab, but in this case, we need to. And you need to have a little bit of a, a JSON configuration in here with some special entries. There's really nothing secret about what's in here, but you can kind of see how much stuff is in here. Now, I'm going to have this uh, special entry, and I'll have some placeholder stuff. So here you can see I've got my IP address. This is where you would put your IP address instead. And then where it says the, the domain name, auth.routemehome.org, you would replace that, of course, with whatever you've got for your auth site. But once you've got that set up, it's just a one line, maybe two lines in this file that you need to change. And I'll have those marked with the little angle brackets. You copy it, you paste it in here, make sure you've got those changes in place. And then one more time, you click Save just to save those changes. And then you're set for the auth, auth file. Now, for any site that you want to route to, you need to go add one more entry as well in Nginx Proxy Manager. So make sure it has an Nginx Proxy Manager entry. So in this case, we're going to go into intop.routemehome.org. I already have one set up for it. So I'm just going to go here. I'm going to click on Edit. So this, I already had this set up. I just want to add Nginx Proxy Manager to it. Or if I even want to just set it up from scratch, I can do that. So I set it up. I set the IP address. I set the, the port number that it runs on. Again, tick the boxes that make sense for whatever it is you're running. Maybe you need to cache assets, you know, things like that. That's fine. Jump over to the SSL tab. Force SSL, request a new certificate, save it. Make sure that it all comes up with SSL turned on first and you get a secure site. Make sure that it's resolving. If you want to save it after doing this step, just to make sure it goes to that page without having to do the SSL step first, you can do that. I generally set it up, save. This, this tab first, save, try it, make sure it works. I edit it, go to SSL, get the certificate, put in my email, everything like that, save, let it get the SSL certificate, try it, make sure it comes up with SSL. And then my last step is to come to the advanced tab. Now this advanced tab has a little bit longer JSON configuration in it, but again, there's only two or three places in here where you need to make a change, and I think it's only two. So you're gonna make a change here to the IP address and the, and the port number, this is basically for your Authelia install. So right here, you're just going to change this. And, and again, I'll have this file where you can just copy it out of the show notes and paste it into your Nginx Proxy Manager entry. Now right here, you're going to change this to be whatever application it is. So for each site that you add, you're going to change something right here. So this, you can see that this says upstream, and then I've got NTOP on this one. So NTOP here, on the one I did for Homer, I put Homer. On the one I did for another site, I put whatever it was. So I change it here. And then I change it right here on this line. And then I put in the IP address and the port number for that application. So we're basically setting the IP address and port number for the application. And then we're just changing this here to match what we have up above. And then finally, right here at this, at this line, you're going to change again. Instead of whatever it says here, and I'll have example.com in there probably, but you'll change that to be auth.whatever your domain is. Finally, on this last step, you have this set real IP. So you can see here that I've got 7.0, and I've got it set to 16, which means this octet and this octet can actually kind of be anything. So it's 192.168.any of those. If you want to set that more strict, you can. You can set that to 7.0 slash 24, and that would only be 192.168.7. Now, you, could set, you need to set this to whatever your IP address range is on your local network. So if you use 10.0.0. whatever, you'll want to set that one. If you're using 172s because it's Nginx Proxy Manager, you'll want to make sure to leave this one. And you may just need to add a line here that has your IP addresses or change this line to make it match whatever your IP addresses are for your local network. So this line right here is one that you'll probably change because I've got mine set to 7. You'd want to change yours to whatever it is. This line you probably want to leave, and you may need to add a line, maybe two, just depending on what you have set up on your network. So once you've made those few little changes to this file, really everything else stays the same. So one more time, you're going to come in here and you're going to put in the IP address of your Authelia right here at the top. IP address and port, make sure they're set correctly. You're going to come down to this section and change the name of the app from NTOP to whatever it is you're running in both of these lines. Okay. You're going to change the IP address for whatever that app is and then the port number for whatever that app is. 
After that, you're just going to come down a little bit right here, and you're going to change this from routemehome.org or example.com, and you're going to put in your domain for whatever your Authelia site is. So it'll be off dot whatever your domain is dot com or dot org or dot gov or whatever it happens to be. And lastly, you're going to come down to the bottom, and you're going to set this real IP to be the IP range for your local network. And again, you may have to add a line or something to add extra IP ranges if you have those. But if you don't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you probably just need to set this one to whatever your IP range is for your local network. Once you're done with that, again, click Save. And when you've done that, you can go and test this out. So you can see here, I'm already logged in. That's why it's only prompting me for the second factor, because I'm, I logged in to get to my dashboard earlier but it prompts me for my second factor when I try to go to that site. So now that it's prompting me, I want to test it. So I'm going to put in my factor and it says, hey, good job. And then it says, welcome to NTOP NG. And of course, now I have to authenticate into NTOP. But if I get to this page, I know that my redirect is working. I know that everything's functioning correctly. I know that I've got it running with Nginx Proxy Manager. So we've got Authelia set up. So I know that it took a long time to go through this video and it took a while to explain it, but I wanted to go through things in detail for you guys because it took me a while to kind of figure this stuff out. It took me a while to kind of go read and understand and figure out what things do I need and what things don't I need and how do I get them set up. So I wanted to make sure I'm giving you that information to the best of my ability. I've been really happy with the way Authelia has been working. I really like this project. It's a really great project and authentication is so important these days and protecting everything that you've got as much as you can is so important as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.